What's up, Tim Cant here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the new Absinthe 6. That's right, it's back for modern operating systems with some quality of life improvements, the most important of which I feel to be the inviting new interface. Also, Brian Clevenger is back. Backwards compatibility is here. You can load all your old presets. Before we proceed, full disclosure, I worked on some of the Absinthe 6 tutorial videos for Native Instruments in a freelance capacity. This video isn't a review of the synth or anything, but I just wanted to be completely transparent. So that said, let's reintroduce ourselves to Absinthe. So first, let's take a look at the patch view, which is essentially the main page of the synth. If you're familiar with previous versions of Absinthe, you'll notice that one of the biggest changes to the synth is the revamped interface that, while still initially a little intimidating, I found much more intuitive than previous versions. Lots of the presets are very complicated indeed, so I found it easier to start from scratch when getting to grips with its capabilities. To initialize the patch, we select New Sound. Absinthe 6 has three channels, each one of which features a sound source and two insert processors. Currently only one sound source is active, it's set to single oscillator mode with a sine wave. Sound sources feature a choice of six oscillator types, two sampler types and audio input. For the sample based sound sources, a library of audio files is included and of course you can load your own sounds. The synth oscillators feature a variety of waveforms to select from plus unison options with up to eight voices. You can use the random parameter to randomize the unison detune, resulting in a more organic sound. Once you've created a tone with the sound sources, you can process it with an insert. These feature a load of filter types plus cloud, frequency shifter, ring modulation and wave shaper capabilities. So here I've got my unison sawtooth running through a wave shaper and a notch filter. What I'd really like to do is modulate the notch filter's cutoff frequency. We can do that with the synths, envelopes or LFOs, and as complex envelope shapes are intrinsic to Absinthe's DNA, let's check those out. On the envelopes view, I click new envelope, then I select the module and the parameter I want to modulate. Envelope breakpoints can be added, moved and removed at will. Absinthe envelopes are really very involved and can be synced to host tempo, loop, feature dozens of breakpoints and even have their own LFOs. For example, if we turn on the LFO option here, we can see the envelope LFO visually represented. By selecting different breakpoints, we can adjust the LFO for different parts of the envelope. Let's try a low pass filter to hear how that sounds. Nice and squelchy. In addition to the two inserts on each channel, you get two further inserts which affect all three of them. And finally, a main effects module where you can choose between six effects, most of which are delay or physical modeling based, and the grain based etherizer. This wobbly bass I've made wouldn't particularly benefit from an expansive delay or grain sound, so here I'm using the pipe effect with a low wet level to provide a touch of stereo slime. Let's pick a different sound to process with Etherizer. I'm going to go for a sample engine playing back the distant flute sample. Here's how it sounds unprocessed. Here's how it sounds with Etherizer. Let's turn up the feedback, pitch the etherizer transpose down an octave and play a thick chord. I think that sounds very pleasant indeed, but I do love a nice simple pad. Let's see if we can make it more absinthe. In the envelope view, I click transform generate AR pulse. This tool allows me to quickly make a rhythmic envelope. Let's go for 16 beats at 160 BPM. I click apply and the envelope is created. Let's loop it up. Now, if we play a tight chord, the sound isn't particularly interesting. It's fine, but let's try a chord with a bit of looser timing between playing the notes.
that's more interesting. Absinthe doesn't really have traditional delay or reverb effects, so let's add some plugins and hear how it sounds. I think that sounds pretty. Let's try adding another element to see if we can make a more developed sound. Let's activate channel B's sound source and set it to the FM oscillator. I'll turn up the FM frequency and index to get a richer sound. Then I'm going to assign LFO1 to the index and turn down the LFO speed. Absinthe has polyphonic LFOs, which is great because like the rhythmic envelope, if we play the notes offset, we get a pleasing textural interplay. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. We're still only using a fraction of the synth's capabilities. You could spend all day making sounds with this thing. But what if you don't want to? Well, preset wise, they've got this map that allows you to scoot about the factory presets in a satisfying way with your arrow keys. Slides and tags can be used to narrow your search results down. With the bank section, you can pick from various eras of Absinthe patches, so if I just want to hear what's new, I can select the Absinthe 6 bank and get auditioning. The presets you make won't get added to this map, but there's also a more traditional list view, and you can do your favoriting and look at your user patches here. Other stuff that's going on here. In Effect View, you've got extended controls for the effect modules, plus FX input mixing stuff and surround stuff, which if you make Movie or video game soundtracks is handy. Wave view, it's a waveform editor. Fiddle with some waveforms in here. Assign view, there are 16 macros. MPE stuff is happening and you can do micro tuning. If you're into the more arty and or performance side of things, all that stuff is in the assign view. Okay, that's the basics. My hot take is, Absinthe has never been this approachable. It's still not a beginner synth in my opinion, but I found it loads more inviting. The other bells and whistles are cool. If you're a preset jockey, the new map is cool. And there are a ton of new presets. I think this release should be broadly pleasing to people. If one were to level a complaint against Absinthe 6, it would be that it doesn't have any radical new features. But I imagine people will just be happy to have Absinthe back with significant quality of life improvements. Ultimately, under the hood, it's the same uncompromising synthesizer it's always been. There's a lot you can do with it, and you'll get the best results from it if you have a good understanding of synthesis and approach it with some degree of intentionality. That's not to say preset enjoyers won't find it useful, but if you're someone who likes to tweak presets, you'll find it requires more effort and a more thoughtful approach than, say, an emulation of an 80s analog synth. If you'd like to learn more about Absinthe 6, then I've linked the official NI tutorials in the description. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye.